It's time for Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. We've had some twisted scripture winners in the past, but this one, wow, takes the cake. This is Wretched Radio. is a quote from reproductive health advocate Alicia Baker who's a resident of Indianapolis and a Methodist <laughs> sorry a Methodist just it's hard don't say pastor it's what yeah, she is not really using the Bible to defend forcing Christians to fund abortions all hmm. right uh-huh that's right to defend forcing Christians to fund abortions. In other words, you should be happy that your tax dollars are going to Planned Parenthood, is what this Methodist woman had to say. Quote, Jesus directs us to advocate for a just society. Stop right there. No, Jesus echoing a refrain throughout the Old Testament, he calls for justice. Individuals to behave justly. Be a just business person. Be a just lender. Be a just treater of other people. But he doesn't call for social justice. So we want to stop right there and ask ourselves the question, how does the Bible define justice? And the answer is not socially As a social construct, it defines it typically individually, how we are supposed to treat one another. And that distinction seems to have been lost these days. There was a statement that has been signed now by, I think, about 7,000 people on social justice, 14 affirmations and denials that they listed to say, we got to have a conversation about this social justice business because it looks more like socialism justice than social justice. Dr. John MacArthur, he wrote an article recently. In fact, I think it was just a few days ago. And I think he's spot on. Of course he is. He's John MacArthur, you knucklehead. John MacArthur stating that we've imported too many ideas from the world into Christianity regarding the issue of justice. How we go about fixing a busted system needs to be determined by the Bible. I should better, more accurately say, not a busted system, but if there's busted treatment of individuals, how does the Bible say we go about doing it? And it's not by importing other ideas. Now, there was an article that talked about this and had a quotation from Dr. Al Mohler, who, by the way, did not sign the statement, doesn't intend to. You should note There were some rumors that he discouraged Southern Seminary professors from signing the statement. He denied those rumors. So that's that's where that is at today. Nevertheless, Al Mohler, not going to be signing the statement. Instead, he said this. Articles X1V and XV of the Baptist Faith and Message are excellent guides to Christian cultural engagement. He noted especially the final two sentences of Article 15, quote, Every Christian should seek to bring industry, government, and society as a whole under the sway of the principles of righteousness, truth, and brotherly love. In order to promote those ends, Christians should be ready to work with all men of goodwill and in any good cause. Um, Well, I don't think all men, if you want to go with this statement, not if it means ecumenism, always being careful to act in the spirit of love without compromising their loyalty to Christ and the truth. Now, question. Should every Christian seek to bring industry, government, and society as a whole under the sway and principles of righteousness, truth, and brotherly love? I I, I don't see that in the New Testament. I don't see a Bible verse that, well, at least I can't think of one that jumps to mind to say, yes, that is our job to make the world a better place for people to go to hell from. I just don't see that. 
And that's an issue that will be an ongoing debate. But with that debate is the issue of social justice. And I think where the debate is going to be going very soon, if it hasn't already, it needs to be going here very soon. And that is how are we going to deal with one another? How are we going to treat the people with whom we disagree on social justice issues? I think we better start talking about it as fast as possible. Personally, for instance, Dr. Al Mohler. Several people have sent me emails saying, what do you think? What should we do with Al Mohler? And I think that's a fair question. But that question, I think, brings this conversation to a very sharp point. Al Mohler, is anybody going to argue that Dr. Al Mohler isn't orthodox? Is anybody going to suggest he's not a Christian because he didn't sign the social justice statement? I hope not. I suspect some will. But this, the issue of social justice, as I see it, is not a litmus test for orthodoxy. Now, I grant you, it could, but not at this moment. If it changes the gospel, then yeah. I do think we've got ourselves something that needs to be examined very, very carefully. But at the moment, remember, these things play out in real time. At the moment, you would never say Al Mohler is somehow trying to expand or betray the gospel. I'm sure that he would say, no, 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 no. I'm just trying to apply it rightly. And you disagree with him. Now, let me talk to you about another famous evangelical Christian, most likely, no, but yeah, I stand anything over 50% would be most likely. Most likely, you believe in believer's baptism. Dr. R.C. Sproul did not. What do you think about R.C. Sproul? He loved him. He's terrific. He's great. Yeah, he's with yeah, the pedo baptism thing. I dis I disagree with you. You know the old covenant thing, just a little bit too much for my taste. But oh, R.C. Sproul's amazing. Why would we think that way about R.C. Sproul regarding baptism when we wouldn't think that way about Al Mohler regarding social justice? That doesn't seem to make sense to me. Well, I, this is going to be fascinating to watch play out. Conference season will soon be upon us. What are we going to do about different speakers having different opinions on the issue of social justice? Will there be disinvitations? Will there be declined invitations? Will there be rules around what can be said, not said? That's a pretty interesting question. Will these speakers appear on the stage at the same time when they disagree on social justice? All of this is going to get worked out. It is going to get worked out. My encouragement, let's start thinking it through now. Let's say, for instance, you believe on the side that I am definitely on, and that is the side of the social justice statement. That's where I land. Let's say you do too. What if you're going to a conference then there's somebody there who didn't sign that statement. What are you going to do? See, we all need to work this out. And might I suggest lickety split? And let me say this. What we conclude today might be something different than we conclude tomorrow. These things can change. We, we don't need to draw a line and say we're never moving that marker because we can move that marker based on what happens. As I said, if people start to expand the gospel to include social justice, then we've then we've got a different statement. Th then this is then that would be more along the lines of the inerrancy statement. Then this would be along the lines of the ECT statement because they're dealing with a core theology here and messing with it. Right now, the, as a rule, so far they're not. So how are you going to treat that brother or sister when you disagree? Might I encourage you? Keep disagreeing. That's just fine because you're right. That's fine, <laughs> but let us remember these really are brothers and sisters. I meet Presbyterians all the time whom I love. I, it just it just doesn't, like I meet somebody who goes, yeah, hey, Todd, nice to meet you. I'm a Presbyterian. Back from me, you pedo baptist Never think like that. How am I going to think when I meet somebody? who doesn't sign and believe in the correct understanding of the social justice statement. 
That is the question. Back to our scripture twister. Jesus directs us to advocate for a just society that allows people to live their lives to the fullest. He directs us to advocate for a just society that allows people to live their lives to the fullest. In John 10, 10, here it comes. Jesus says, I come that you might have life and have it to the full, which she interprets to mean the ability to have an abortion. I this means supporting access to, to affordable forest. birth control. Whether they want to become pregnant, birth control allows us to live our lives to the fullest. Mm. All due respect, baby. Madam Methodist Pastor, that's not what Jesus was talking about in that text. This is Wretched Radio.